George, welcome to the Sports Editor. Thank you very much for taking time to chat to us in, in the chilly Cape area. But it's really good to chat to you about your career. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you. Good. George, just start off with generally your, your career and basic your approach to cricket. Um, I get the impression that you go about never assuming anything. You just get stuck in, you work hard. Is that a good way to sum up your approach to cricket? Yeah, to be honest, that's that's pretty but but uh, sorry, that's pretty much me. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not really a guy that likes to talk a lot in in changing rooms. I'm more a guy that just just go and do it. Just that's how I talk. Just trying to work hard as I can, and then hopefully the race will take over. No, excellent. Because you've obviously worked very hard, and you keep chipping away at your goals. And has that mm. helped you deal with perhaps pressure situations or like a big game coming up? You know, you've put time and effort in here yeah? and things perhaps should work out the way you want. Uh, I, th- I would believe so, but I also think it's my personality because my personality, I'm, I'm quite chilled. So, <laughs> so pressure don't really always hurt me. Um, it's, more, it's more before the before the game starts. That's when I'm... That's when I'm feeling like, okay, now this is this is real now. But in the moment, I'm not. I'm very calm and stuff. Mm. I, I would. Yeah, being in the moment is, is a jolly good thing. I think a lot of more people are trying to be in that, just deal with it once it's happening, and that I think that's helped your career a lot. Um, but you played a lot of club cricket when you were younger, um, and through the years, you've continued to support your clubs and yeah. play for them. Has that helped you get to where you are now professionally? To be honest, I think maybe that's why I'm I'm a lot more chilled as well because I've I've started when I was 14 at uh, Durbanville, and I played with the big boys. So, but I've only I played one game there and I played six team or something. But still, just oh. to play with uh, guys bigger than you, um, older than you, just learning from them, uh, respect them. Um, yeah, it started like that, and then when I was 15, I made my my debut for Durbanville first team. Um, yeah, I was luckily lucky enough to play with uh, for ex first class cricketers as well, and against um, a certain amount of ex first class players like Mark De Statler. Sure. Um, I was lucky enough to play with him and against him. So, so I've learned a lot from him. And even Wallace Albertine, um, he also played first class cricket for Cobras. Um, then there's Johan Portma, there's Jakub Castle, there's, sure. there's all that mention. And I played with them when I was in school. So, yeah, I think from there was a big learning curve, just the way they go about their game and just the enjoyment fact- factor, I think. So, yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to play, to play club and school at the same time. Yeah, it keeps you busy and out of trouble. Yeah, but club cricket is, yeah. I think, absolutely important for cricket in South Africa. And I hope the club cricket structure stays strong because that's where you find yeah. your, your guys are working yeah. hard and you just never know. You might find a gem somewhere along the line. Yeah, exactly. It all seemed to happen, you know, quite quickly for you. You know, you got called up to the Cobras at the age of 22, I believe. And, mm. and then that was for your List A debut. And then... Soon after that, it was four-day cricket where you also represented yeah. the Cobras. Um, was it always your plan to dominate in both formats? I was, I was quite surprised when I got the call-up. Um, unfortunately, what's his name? Uh, Dane Pitt got injured in, uh, I think it was the championship trophy or whatever, that T20 thing. And then, obviously, then there was Robbie P as well. And there was the two of them that actually... Uh, competed for a spot in the Cobras and then that that same year um, Robin Peterson got called up to the Proteus and unfortunately then Pitt was injured but then I got the opportunity to um, to play for the Cobras which came as a big surprise to me but but yeah like I was lucky enough to to be able to done well in that competition and in the four day games as well I've done pretty well so yeah it was a, it was a good time that well, I think you've done more than pretty well. You've taken 11 five-wicket hauls, my goodness me. <laughs> uh-huh. That's brilliant. Um, and, you know, you said that, that you've taken your opportunity. Do you think that is what sort of inspired you to say, right, I've, here that it is now, I've got to do as well as I can. And then before you know it, like I say, you've taken 11 five-wicket hauls. That call-up, has it contributed to your success? 
yeah i, I would think so um and when i got to call up for the co-rose the first time it was like uh like a dream but then obviously as you go on you actually think like this is not your only dream you want to accomplish you want to play for south africa and um yeah luckily uh, i actually did it i just didn't expect to do it in uh, test cricket but um yeah i think that was that was obviously the main goal but for me i haven't played i've played for the cricket that year when i was 22 and then i didn't play for another four years after that so obviously that time i wrote test cricket down i wasn't even thinking about that to be honest and i spoke to Ashwell and faik about it the year before and um they told me never don't don't even think about it because you are good enough to be able to to play there mm-hmm. um so yeah don't don't give up just trying to give your pace and don't be too hard on yourself or too down on yourself and then eventually a year later well i think it was maybe less than no it was a year later i got called up for the for the test because mm-hmm. it's, it's an interesting time for you because you're doing so well domestically you know, you made your debut in South Africa, and I think you took four wickets, I think it was against India. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, boom, virus hits. But you're doing so well. So how do you sort of say to yourself, or what do you say to yourself? Do you just say, you know what, I'm just going to keep going here, but you don't want to let go. There, there could be another opportunity for you. How do you handle it? Yeah, I'm just, I just trying to do the best I can. Um, yeah. It is. It was. It was tough because obviously I did reasonably well with my um, Test debut, and then I didn't get another call up at all again in Test cricket. Um, also with the one day stuff, I only got a, another call up at the end of the season to India. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite a frustrating um, time for me, but I think that's probably something I needed to play a, a full franchise season. Um, trying to work hard and yeah, I think the hard work paid off and obviously now next season is more important than, than last season for me because um, I want to make a breakthrough in the, in the one day stuff as well and T20 I, I want to represent South Africa in all, all three formats not just I don't want to just play the one game and then everyone forget about it I want to I wanna play all, all formats Definitely no, that, that sounds great well, I think you're definitely ticking a lot of the boxes because you've taken over 300 wickets so far. It's brilliant. Yeah. But uh-huh. you weren't always a spin bowler and I think you're a seamer. I'm sure you yeah. made the decision when you decided, no, that's it. I'm going to be a spin bowler. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, it was a weird one because I think that time you had to bowl spin and we were on a, on a cricket camp or some, some week with, I was with the Cricket Peninsula Academy. Um, in Belleville and um, we didn't have a spinner so they told us we have to bowl nine overs of spin and I decided that day okay now let's just go bowl a little bit in the net and it actually went well and then from there I just told him listen okay, I'll bowl spin in the game hmm. and I still remember I bowled nine overs three for 15 and then since that since that day I didn't look back. I, I just decided there's no seam bowling anymore. It's only spin. No, that's great because, you know, like I've touched on a few of the stats earlier, you've just been doing so well and you seem to be able to pin batsmen down and you really create that desired pressure um, for your bowling partner, obviously, on the other side. Um, and there seems to be quite a, a good group of spin bowlers at the moment, obviously, yourself. You look at Kishef Maharaj, John John Smuts. Um, do you think there's a there's going to be a consistent trend of spin bowlers or is this sort of like a, a once-off thing at the moment? I actually hope it will be, become a trend because in South Africa, we used to no spinners com- compete against each other. It's only normally it's just one spinner and then mm. that's it. Now we've got, we've got at least five or six that can play international cricket. But um, obviously, Keshav is the number one now. And obviously, for me, I want to knock him down. Uh, because obviously it's like you want to compete against the best in the world. So for me to be able to do that, I need to try and knock him down. Even though he will become maybe a, a teammate one day, but but that's just the, the reality. And I believe it will make South Africa better if we all trying to compete against each other, and that will make 
make the pro tiers go to to number one in the world hopefully one day absolutely yeah there's nothing wrong with a, a bit of competition i'll tell you that <laughs> yeah. yeah i think the, the coaches the coaches love that yes no it's it's good because i mean if you if you've got a, people to choose from it just makes selection easier in a sense but also tough yeah but the whole picture yeah. Yeah, it definitely does give more opportunities. That's good. You must you must continue to work hard. It's very very good. Yeah, no, I'll I'll try my best. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, domestically, um, George has there sort of been one batsman where you thought, well, this guy's actually bloody tough to bowl it because he seems to watch exactly what I'm doing and he's done his research properly. And has it been a bit of a nice, almost a contest between you two? Um. Yes, I think my, okay, my first season, there's always one guy I wanted to get out, and that was um, Neil McKenzie that time. Um, yeah, he was, he was, but he, it was there at, at his end of his career. Oh. So, unfortunately, I've only had one or two seasons against him. I think just one, actually. Um, so, yeah, he was one guy I tried to, tried to get out. I almost had the opportunity, a drop catch, unfortunately, but... Okay. but Part of the game, but um, but yeah, he was he was quite tough to bowl at because he was just so clever and he knew exactly what to do. He played the game at his pace, and obviously as a youngster, you just want to come and bowl and just you, you don't think about how to get him out. You just want to bowl and bowl and bowl. We just sat back and just played the situation, and then later on he capitalized and like I got bored basically, and then he just <laughs> bowled me. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, because if you look at it, it's quite quite interesting to see how you guys go about certain things. Is there sort of like a I don't know? Because you see this when we played a bit of like a code word where you purposely going to bowl down the leg side and hopefully get a stumping or something like that, or is it just in the moment where you're just going to try something new and the keeper just has to be sharp and do something different to try and get him out? Yeah, I don't really think that I've ever tried to do that before. Uh, <laughs> if it happened, it probably was by mistake anyway. So, so but then in that moment, he will say, no, you did it on purpose. But actually, no, he definitely did not do that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, good to see. Um, talking about, about batting and things like that, and you've always done very, very well. Um, you've made three centuries at first class level, which is, mm. again, really good for... I think the amount of time you get to actually bat, because I don't know how to yeah. look at your batting position. Yeah. It, you almost want to be known as like a surprise batter, or you just go there and then send the bowler packing. Um, to, be, to be honest, I would like to bat in the top six uh, at the Cobras, but I know it's, it's going to be tough because there's a lot of batsmen, there's quality players. So I'm happy at number, I think it's number seven or eight where I'm batting. So... But luckily, Ashwell, he just tell me to go play my game. I don't have to. I don't have to worry about technique or anything like that. Um, I think that's where my strength is. Just go and play. If I start thinking about other stuff about technique and stuff, then then I'm not playing as I should. And yeah, I have to take my hat off to him for uh, for believing in me him and Faik. Um, just. Uh, constant pressure on me to just go out and just play your game however you want to um, you know, just just go and give it your all. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and talking about batting, obviously we, uh, I like to find out like contests and things like that. Um, has there any been a bowler that actually rattled you a bit and given you a few short balls that you've been hard to deal with? Um... Yes, I think when I started, um, yeah. obviously still now, but um, you still get short balls now, but you just deal with it differently because obviously that time, I remember when I batted my first time in T20 cricket, um, I think it was against the Lions when Chris Morris and Arvis Fulhun, they both of them bowled 150 kilometers per hour and that's, that's quick and I've never faced that before and as I walked on the field, Ardis just walked past me and said, okay, let's see how you can handle 150 kilometers per hour. And then I was rattled. I was like, oh, no, what's happening now? Um, yeah, but obviously as a youngster, you quite see like, oh, no, you're intim intimidated. But now it's, uh, you train so hard for it. Um, 
you do drills and all that all that stuff so you you deal to to uh to handle those sort of stuff and uh yeah it's also about heart and show you you showing you in the fight here and stuff mm, absolutely talking about fast bowlers and it seems to be quite nice that you know in south africa there's still that nice trend of, of fast bowlers you look at the previous guys like alan donald etc my kind team you look at guys like now like Anlech Nokia, Rapada, right. you know, it's, it's coming through nice and strongly. And um, is that, do you think, going to be absolutely essential in terms of South Africa's success going forward, combined with, obviously, good voters like yourself? Is that role being utilised as well as it can be, if you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, I think, um, I believe South Africa always have fast bowlers. Um, it's, just, it's just in our blood, I think. Um, because when there's when there's guys retiring, there's always a backup. Um, there's always guys coming up. Um, yeah, there's a there's a few that's on the scene now that still they still raw, but but they will definitely definitely um, become better and quicker and stronger um, as they play the game a bit more. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, Talking about playing the game and, and having a good, good year, I think it's been a, a really good year for you. You've won the Saka Most Valuable Player Award. Um, how did you, you feel about winning that award? And, and what it sort of, you know, entail? What value do you, do you feel you've perhaps added to the game this past season? Yeah, I was actually quite happy getting the award. Um, thankfully, the, the season was cut short. Otherwise, I don't think I would have won it <laughs> because I was with the with the Proteus and then there was still a few games left and I think um Grand Rulofsen or um uh Sin Subrian sorry would have uh, caught up with me but yeah thankfully the season got caught uh, uh shortcuts or whatever. But um yeah I was I was actually I, I want to say surprised but also not because obviously that's something that was a goal of mine to to win the MVP, mm. um, yeah. So, so for me, also it's gone now. It's it's past um, now. It's just about having another good season to to be able to get that call up to the pro tiers or just be uh, a leader for the Cobras. Um, trying to get the younger guys coming through as well. Trying to pick their minds as well because they can help you as well. So. So that's my that's my goal. I've actually forgotten about all the awards and stuff. It's obviously it was special, but but I've forgotten about it, and I'm looking forward to to the season. Now. I've been working quite hard on on my game as well. So so hopefully everything will will become well or good for me next season as well. No, I'm sure well with that attitude and that mindset because uh, I've actually never really heard that before, where a person's actually forgotten about the awards, but in a good way. Because you just yeah. you don't want to live on that memory, you want mm. to keep going forward, which is excellent. But yeah. one more award that you won is the the four day franchise cricketer of the year, and I, I think that's that's mm. hard because obviously the four day cricket's the purest form of cricket. Um, yeah. Is that sort of a, a pathway? Do you feel where selectors are going to start saying, "Hey, look at this guy, he's he's doing something mm. right here," and obviously you've won yeah. such an important award. Mm. Yeah, like I believe I can be the. Okay, I'm not saying I. I uh, I can be the the colours of South Africa, but like I'm trying to put my standards as high as that. Um, when I've got the bat in hand or I've got the ball in hand, I want to try to trying to be the best. Um, I don't want to just be average. I know there's going to be games where you're going to be average, but I want to I want to be better than than I was last season. So, um, and I know South Africa probably they need. I think uh, an all-rounder. They've been looking. They've been looking for for all-rounders now. The last few years since Gallus retired. Um, I'm not saying it will be me, but like I know there's maybe a gap in the market for me to be able to to cement a spot or just be in the squad more often. Um, so yeah, that's that's obviously one goal, and obviously to be able to. Being the uh, one day World Cup team in 2023, I think it is in India. Mm. So I think that could be a good opportunity for me now, especially in the one day stuff, to to do better than I did last season. 
Brilliant job, because I, I agree with you fully. I think all-rounders are absolutely essential in a team. Um, mm. you know, I think South Africa is facing, that's probably one area that is a bit of a, a problem at the moment. Um, you know, because mm. like I say, if you've got a good all-rounder, there's an extra bowler and a batter in one. Yeah. Like like, in, he was the perfect, perfect example of that. Um, but now England are claiming that Stokes is probably better than Jocelyn, but I'm going to have to... Yeah. Because no. I think Jocelyn is the world's best player Ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think of things like it? Um, do you think that Stokes would ever make up to Jacques Hannes? Or was that guy got, Jacques Hannes got that, that almost that crown that he is the best all rounder of all time? Yeah, I think the game has changed so much actually, but I still believe Gullis is much better than, well, not much better, but um, he is better than Stokes, the. The stats shows it as mm-hmm. well. Um, I don't think it's easy for, for a guy to just average 57 or whatever it was in test cricket and take almost 300 test wickets. That's, mm-hmm. that's insane. So, so, yeah, but also I'm looking, like, let's say if I look at the England squad, um, I was lucky enough to play against him and with him, um, Mawin Ali. So he's, he's the type of cricketer I want to be. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm more looking towards towards his way, um, mm. or uh, what's the guy from New Zealand, the left arm spinner, um, uh, Sand. Yes, yes. Or uh, Asia, like I'm more looking towards that, but I want to be better than what they are. Yeah, well, the way you set goals and the way you work, I'm sure that's just a matter of time because you really are determined, and that's brilliant to see, George. And um, I always like the term quite confidence. You know, you just get down with what you need to do. And I believe you have got a lot of quiet confidence there. So just keep going. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to touch on it very, very briefly because we, we did earlier. When you got your call-up to the South African ODI, ODI side against India, that would have been a, a jolly big challenge for you playing against India in India. Um, but was that like a challenge where you thought, yes, here we go. I want to prove myself because I enjoy challenges. I want to be put against the best. Yeah, I think um, that time I was I was ready to to make my debut for the Pro Tears because I was quite confident that time. Um, I was in reasonably good form as well. Maybe not with the ball, but more with the bat. I think. Um, but now I've, I've fixed that problem. So, so yeah, I'm. Whatever team I wanna I wanna play against the best. So because I even made my debut against India in Test cricket, and they I think they're the, the number one team in the world. So mm. and I did reason well against them. I didn't feel like I'm out of sorts against them. It was it was really tough, um, but I felt like I can actually I can play on that level. It's not impossible. You just have to sort your game out and work towards your goals, and then you will be fine. Um, like Ashwell, Ashwell spoke a lot about us. Um, people come to you and say how tough international cricket is and all that. But um, like you said, it is tough. But if you work hard enough, you know you can actually play on that level. So, yeah, I think for him, um, making a speech about stuff like that, it was. that's why you see a lot of, um, I think, the younger Cobra guys coming into the national team do well because they know Ashwell believes in them and he, he um, coached us the way, the way he did. And yeah, I think, yeah, you just, you just know if they select you and you play, you know you're good enough. Well, it sounds like he's surrounded by very good people at the Cape Brothers, especially with, with Coach Ashwell Prince. So I'm really good to hear that. And it sounds like things are really yeah. on. Awesome. George, as we sort of yeah. go to, to an end now, um, I know we, we've touched on quite a few things, but are you quite excited for the prospects that lie ahead of you simply because of, of your work rate? Yes, um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited to see what's going to happen now in the future, um, whenever the cricket might uh, resume, hopefully it's soon enough. But, um, but yeah, I'm quite excited to see how my, how my bowling is going now because I've been working hard on that. The batting, I haven't really done anything because you can't really train that on your own but hopefully from next next week or so we're back with the Cobras then we can then we can start doing doing that sort of stuff yeah if you ever need someone to buy that you know just let me know it's, it's no problem 
<laughs> okay, no, also. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I enjoy cooking. Yeah. I played a bit, but not at your level. <laughs> no, you never know. That would be you funny. Might just whack... yeah. You might just whack me all over. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, but it'll be good fun, I think. You're a good try. You never know. I'll, I'll be brave. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, George, do you... Last question, because you just got me thinking now. Do you ever, like... Use a secret weapon. Do you like to bowl like an arm ball, just keep one straight once in a while? Or do you just keep turning it away from the right hander and then in away from the left hander? Yeah, it's more, um, I'm not trying to bowl an arm ball now. It's more like an under, I'm trying to undercut the ball oh, sometimes. Okay. So, okay. So I've been working, I've been chatting with uh, Prasanna, the video analyst of the Protea. So, so he's helped me a lot in, in that way. Um, how to how to be able to to overcut and overspin the ball, um, especially with my techniques. So I've I've, cha- I've tweaked a few changes in my action. So so hopefully next season it will be it will be much better. Yeah, I'll definitely be watching that and putting it on slow mo to see if you've got it going. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, <I> hope so. <laughs> well, George, it's been absolutely brilliant to chat to you. Thanks so much for your time. I know you guys are busy, so I really do appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you for, for having the chat. Lucky man. I see you're a big Man United supporter. Yeah, no, I'm massive. I'm massive. Oh, He's, yeah, if they lose, I'm upset the whole day. <laughs> and I don't want to speak. Yeah, no, I've been supporting them since I was near to a grasshopper. So it was nice to see them do well. Yeah, yeah same. No, but yeah, they didn't play that well, but a win is a win. Yeah. But I think that they're quite tired they, they, because they've been playing with the same team for the last yeah. two months or whatever it was. So, yeah. But hopefully a few good signings this, this season. So I, I really hope so. I believe there's two or three guys that are leaving. Like, you know, Mata's leaving and there's a few other guys that are leaving. Their Champions League spot is secured now. Yeah, that's good. Very, very good. Yeah, nice. that's awesome. Well, look at George. No, awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Take it easy, but and good luck, and it's good to see you working so hard, man. Keep it up. Yes, Ryan. Thanks. Cheers, man. Bye. That's fine.